All right, now I inspire. Let's cook. Let's cook. Uh, I know many of you probably seen this video before. <clears throat> I'm just not getting to it. I mean, I've seen it before. You know what I'm saying? It really wasn't nothing to me. I think drop uh touchdown on it. I just so happen to uh see it. Now matter of fact, uh it's a different reason uh why this is brought to the table. Uh this is uh Mr. Mythos, all right. And uh you know pretty much very disrespectful uh to the most high. All right. And so, uh, I look here, man, you got some explaining to do, but we're also going to show the people, all right, uh, what you can never understand, all right, because it's a family thing, no doubt. All right, this is, uh, Mr. Mythos, uh, Yahweh the Dragon, all right? Like I said, y'all may have seen it before. Uh, we're just going to take a look at it and pretty much tear it down, <laughs> slice and dice it, all right? Uh, because, you know, uh, you know, he said some pretty, pretty bold things, all right? He made some pretty bold declarations uh, against the most high, all right? Uh, and we're going to see if they true. All right, you got the flow, Mr. Mythos. It's rock. I'm aware that this video is going to be controversial and will, at the very least, make some of my viewers uncomfortable. It is not my intention to undermine anyone's religious beliefs, but simply to investigate a surprisingly deep and bizarre rabbit hole which I stumbled upon some time ago. All right. You're welcome to disagree. My sources, the vast majority of which are drawn from the ancient Hebrew Bible, also known as the Tanakh, are listed in this video's description. All right, listen closely and try to guess what I'm describing. All right, let's play. It has a long snout and smoke pours from its nostrils. It breathes fire. Let's play poker. It has wings and can fly. It dwells inside of a mountain, hoarding its golden treasure. Lastly, it eats livestock. And yes, you heard this right female virgins too all right and so uh clearly this is conjecture all right um <laughs> you know uh you know pretty much you know the mythical uh, stories made up about dragons and stuff like that uh but you look for the real definition of what a dragon is uh then you can surmise that it is an angel, indeed an angel, all right? And we've shown you that. Uh, but nonetheless, we're going to get it from Mr. Mythos. Let's rock. Uh -huh. Well, did you guess Yahweh? If you guessed the God of the Israelites, known by the sacred name Yahweh, as described in the Hebrew Bible, you'd be absolutely correct. Of course, these two are the stereotypical and practically universal descriptors of the mythical creature known as a dragon. But perhaps this connection between the two should not be so surprising. Dragons have appeared in virtually every major culture across the world, and are so old that scholars genuinely have no idea when or where the dragon first originated. All right, you hear that? And so strictly out of his mouth all right so he pretty much debunked uh himself all right and so you know we understand that this was done for you know just to get views or what have you um it wasn't done wholeheartedly all right and to be quite honest in my opinion you took some cheap shots at the most high. But we understand that, all right? <laughs> all right, because he is not, he is not.
think it's one through three. Uh, let's see. Get rid of all this junk. All right, Mr. Mythos. As you can see right here, Amos, right? Uh, chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. Uh, hear this word that the Most High has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Mizraim, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together? Unless... <laughs> Yeah, agreed upon. All right, let's go. Perhaps most relevantly, dragons have a tendency to be worshipped as gods. Archaeological evidence strongly suggests that the ancient Chinese worshipped dragons, known as Long, as far back as 5,000 years B.C. All right, but hold on, hold on, Mr. Mythos. Mr. Mythos, we, we, okay, we understand. All right, you're talking to, um, you know, a research team here at 432 to drop. All right, very fearless. All right, we understand the Dracon. All right, before Dragon, it was Dracon. So we understand that. Uh, I just want to get to the nitty gritty. Uh, what is this you have about versions or what have you? Uh, could we get to that, sir? Let's rock. It is here where this rabbit hole really takes a questionable turn. Let's go. In our investigation of the nostrils, I briefly mentioned Yahweh's massive tent, the tabernacle, where he received prepared food and sacrificed livestock on a daily basis. All right. Of course, this is far from the only instance Yahweh accepted edible offerings. In chapter 31 of the Book of Numbers, Yahweh commands the prophet Moses and his army of 12,000 men to take revenge against the Midianites and wage bloody war on their people. For readability's sake, we'll use the New Living Translation, but... All right, first off, first of all, all right, slow down, slow down, slow down. I know it, I know it, my tribe. Uh, all right, what's with the edibles and shit, all right? Who's eating what, man? We're talking about burnt offerings, all right? Made to our power. That our, that our ancestors made to our power, all right? It has nothing to do with you, all right? You notice he's just skip over burnt offerings, right? All right, he's talking about edibles. All right. All right, so you see he's coming from the NLT. All right, let's go. But you'll find that, regardless of your version of the Bible, the explicit details of this passage are exactly the same. All right, we'll see. After murdering every Midianite man and their leaders, Facts. pillaging their city, Facts. and capturing all the women and children, Facts. Moses commands his troops to kill all the boys and all the women who have had intercourse with a man. Facts. It's passages like these that remind you how brutal the older scriptures really were. Moving on, though, Moses and his men divide their plunder and give a portion of it to Yahweh, which includes 32 Midianite virgins who are... Now, uh, his NLT says what? Let's get that again. I'll come again, mythos. Scriptures really were. Moving on, though, uh -huh. Moses and his men divide their plunder and give a portion of it to Yahweh, okay. which includes 32 Midianite virgins who are never heard from again. All right. You hear that? 32. Let's see. Let's see. All right, because we're going to test you, all right? We're going to test you. All right, I am familiar with this uh, particular piece of uh, scripture right here. All right, this was the last battle. Uh, 
before we were to cross over into our land, all right? The promised land. I think it was a thousand from each tribe, twelve thousand. And we kicked the Midianites asses, all right. Let's start at fourteen. It says, and Moshe was wroth with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands, and captains over uh, hundreds, uh, which came from the battle. And Moshe said unto them, Have you saved all the women alive? Behold, now this is the reason why. All right. Behold. These caused the children of Israel, all right, through the council of who? Balaam, the same motherfuckers the Moabites was trying to solicit to curse us, all right? This fallen demigod who answered to our power, all right? So it's deeper than, all right? Uh, he say virgins. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, we're not going to see virgins uh, in the KJV. All right, so you're in air. <laughs> All right, real time, you in air, man. To commit trespass against the most high. Okay, makes sense. It's the matter of P.R. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Most High. There was a plague among the congregation of the Most High. Let's highlight this for Mr. Mythos. All right. That's why they had to die. Now, therefore, kill every male among the little ones. And kill every woman that have known a man by lying with him. All right. But all the women, but all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him. All right. I'm assuming young adults, females, keep alive. For yourselves. Let's I like this. All right. For Mr. Mythos. See that? There go your versions, except KJV. It's women, children. But all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him keep alive for yourselves. Why? Because there was a plague. Can I highlight that? Can I get that? All right. There was a plague among Israel. That came from the Midianites. See that? <laughs> All right, so this is what this is about. All right, so I know he's going to go All right. Okay, so he's going to go Now he said 32. All right, yeah, 32. All right. Right here, all right. So 40. It says and the persons or 16,000, all right, of which the most highest tribute was 32 persons. 
32 persons. All right, keep that in mind. All right, back to verse 18. Women and children. All right, so you're talking about two uh, different subject matters, all right? Now I am 40, all right? Persons. All right, and here is his so-called aversions in the N-L-T. All right, give me a minute, man. All right, we're back. Let's rock, let's rock. All right, and so, you know, we're going to hear you out. I'm not kidding. You can read the verse yourself. You see that shit? It says, quote, Half of the plunder was given to the fighting men. It totaled 337,500 sheep and goats, of which 675 were the Lord's share. 36,000 cattle, of which 72 were the Lord's share. Right. And so, you know, you don't think he's supposed to get a share just for the respect? All right. You see, the Most High could never, all right, could never exist down here, all right? It's simply not big enough for him. But you calling the Creator a dragon, perhaps you may have him uh, uh, mistaken. Uh, for his personal bodyguard. Like the most high don't supposed to have no shares. That's just for the fucking respect. That's why he coming back to tear shit up. The disrespect. All right. 30,500 donkeys, of which 61 were the Lord's share. Mm-hmm. And 16,000 virgin girls, of whom 32 were the Lord's share. All right, you see that? So that is in the NLT version, all right? Now, he just said it don't matter what, how you read it. Let's just say if they were virgins. It's just the most high share. All right. And so now we understand, you know, that this pretty much was clickbait. All right. But you know, you know what? You're gonna have to you're gonna have to deal with the most high on that one. All right, y'all, we're back with Mythomythros, all right? And Mythomythros, you say you want to talk nostrils, flame, and physicality, all right? You got it. In the various English versions of the Bible, mm -hmm. the Hebrew word apayim is typically translated as a fanciful synonym of faith. A face, face, huh? Hmm. kind of Hebrew you're speaking. <laughs> All right. My bad. My bad. Go ahead. Face or anger. Mm -hmm. Modern scholars, however, deem this translation as inaccurate. Why? 
because out of the nine verses that describe Yahweh with this word, all of them specifically reference its elongation and length, which makes absolutely no sense when describing Yahweh's face or anger. These length references are completely omitted in most translations, mm -hmm. likely mm -hmm. because the translators found the descriptor to be nonsensical. But in the original Hebrew, they indeed remain. Moreover, there are other oh, forms oh, of oh, this oh, word. Oh, oh, oh. All right, now notice he said original Hebrew. All right. Now, conjecture. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. Uh, what they be saying in the courtroom? <laughs> Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> Sustain, all right? Yo, all right? We just pointing out uh, the, uh, you know, <clears throat> the obvious. All right, you got it, man. Word with the same meaning identified throughout the Bible, many of which are used to further describe this feature of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So... What does Apaim actually mean? With overwhelming agreement from biblical scholars, the word literally translates to nostrils. This leaves us with the perplexing mystery as to why Yahweh's apparently long nostrils were so important that they were mentioned so many times throughout multiple generations of scripture. To explain, scholars assume that in ancient Israel, Yahweh may have been seen as a beast with lengthy, protruding nostrils. Oh, 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 really? Now that's a disrespect to the whole 12 tribes. Boy, don't you know, boy, look here, boy. <laughs> Yo. All right, we stepping out here now. You will witness. Nah. Nah. Don't put that on my ancestors, homie. Don't do that. All right. Like I said, man, you're very disrespectful. You out of line. But you know what? Uh, this is between you and the most high. All right. Uh, I have no qualms about it. Go ahead, man. You got it. For example, an alligator, a bull, or, of course, a dragon. This list of potential candidates can quickly be narrowed down, though, by looking at a few key verses. Sure, come on. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 22, uh -huh. states the following. For a fire is kindled in my nostrils, and shall burn to the lowest hell, and it shall consume the earth with her increase. And All right, you sure? You sure? Well... Like I said, we playing we playing poker, all right? We playing poker with the tribe. Uh, so we're going to raise you, all right, to see if you're lying or not. All right, my tribe. Uh, so far, Mr. Mythos is out of his league. All right, uh, Mr. Mytho, we do we do this now. We meditate day and night. All right. Uh, we're going to teach you how to absorb it. But, well, we can't teach you that, man, because uh, you're not Israel. All right, so he went down to what? What was that? 22? All right, y'all, let's read it from Mr. Mythos. Deuteronomy. Chapter 32, verse 22. For a fire is kindled in my anger. All right, what version you got, Mythos? All right, so double conjecture. But see, this here is our ancient uh, love story, right? Uh, between a chosen people and their parents above, all right? You see, you got people 
thinking the most high is a beast. Ain't it what you see? <laughs> All right, but this is our ancient love story right here. All right. Remember the days of old, consider the many years of many years of many gener generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy el elders, and they will tell thee. All right, when the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. All right, everything is about you, Israel. All right, didn't he do it for your ancestors? All right, ain't this how this, how this all, all started? The most I don't change, all right? Just like he brought him out, up out of Mizraim, he got to do it for you. For the most high's portion is his people, Mr. Mythos, his people, their people. And we're just talking, I'm a Abba. The aqua is the lot of his inheritance. All right. It's like in, you know, the book of Isaiah, the most high keeps saying my heritage, my heritage. You're going to hear this over and over again. All right. But, you know, something happened that our ancestors did that got us uh, mixed up with these curses the most high put on us, Mr. Mythos. And it's right here, you see? They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Perhaps y'all gods with abominations provoke they him to anger. Mine anger to anger, not nostrils. I don't know where you're getting it from. I didn't even see Hapayim and Strong's, so I don't know. I mean, I'm not calling you a lie or anything. I just don't know, all right? With abominations, they provoke uh, they him to anger, all right? They sacrifice unto who? Devils, not to Hawa. To gods with the little g, whom they knew not, to new gods, that came newly up, okay, whom your fathers feared not. The rock that begot thee, that are unmer unmindful, all right, and unmerciful at that, all right, and has forgotten Hawa that formed thee, and also Mr. Mythos. When the Most High saw it, he appeared them because of the provoking of his sons. And daughters, Mr. Mythos. All right, so it is a family affair. You only. <laughs> All right. Oh, look here, Mr. Mythos. Are you was looking for a face? Here you go. Verse 20. And he said, I will hide. My face. From them. And I will see what their end will be. All right. Well, check this out, Mr. Mythos. Uh, this one's for you. Start at 39. See now that I, even I, Mr. Mythos, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive, I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand, Mr. Mythos. For I lift my hand to Shamaim and say, I live forever. If I whip my glittering sword in my hand, take hold on judgment, I will. 
render vengeance to mine enemies and will repay them that hate me and call me a beast. And I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh. And that with the blood of the slain of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon our enemies. All right. All right, we're back and we have Mr. Mythos on the channel. All right. Uh, fair use, by the way. Uh, so, all right, all right. Uh, what, what else do you got? All right. Let's keep it going. Let's rock. You got it. And then we have the description of Yahweh in Psalms. All right. Smoke went up from his nostrils uh -huh. and devouring fire from out of his mouth. All right. Well, now let's take, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. All right. The old Psalms 18. Beautiful piece of script. All right. This is about David. All right. All right, that's what he's talking about right here. Uh, there went up smoke up his nostrils, all right, and fire out of his mouth. A uh, devoured coals were kindled by it, all right. We give you that. Nine, he bowed uh, the heavens, the Shamaims also, and came down, and darkness was upon his feet. You see that? And so the Most High has feet. All right. Uh, here, verse 10, it says, And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Ye, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. All right, and so he, here in verse 10, is reference to who? Mr. Mithros. I'm talking about our power. All right. He rode upon a malak, all right, an angel, a dracon, all right, a dragon. All right, a uh, dracon came before dragon, and we're just talking dragon king or angel, Mr. Mythos. And so, here it seems like the most high is riding upon a person of dracon, All right? The most high also thundered. All right. Shot forth. Uh, he shot out lightnings. All right. This is indicative of an omnipotent power. He shot out lightnings. All right. Clearly, we're not talking about a dragon shooting out lightning, although we're not saying that a dragon can't shoot out lightning. All right. All right, something else that's interesting to notice here, all right? 28, for thou will light my candle, all right? And we're just talking Prester, all right? Now, we begin to show, uh, the hell? We begin to show... Uh, Mr. Mythos, uh, what we're made of, all right? Uh oh.
all right and so that light all right is what that pressure right because we're just talking to kindle or inflame all right We're also talking about a meteor, all right, which is also Mr. Mythos, a dragon, huh? Which can also be a person, but what kind of a person? Violent, Mr. Mythos. All right. And also can be male or female, Mr. Mythos. Which make sense, Mr. Mythos. All right. Watch me work. Which makes a complete sense, all right, in Second Baruch 51, all right, when we're just talking about the transformation of those who the Most High come back to save, all right, from mortal to immortal, all right, you get that in Second Ezra, taking off your mortal clothing and putting on immortal clothing all right this is that special group that elect that did not taste death and we're just keeping it strictly torah and the book of remembrance to knock if you will but here, Mr. Mithros, uh, it says let's see if we can chop this down. I'm not gonna give you all the drop. All right, here we go. Let's get it at 51 5. All right, second Baruch, chapter 51, starting at 5. When they therefore uh, we'll see that those over whom they are exalted now will then be more exalted and magnified than they. And then both these and those will be changed. All right. You see, we're talking about two different subject matters. Mr. Mythos. These and those are these into the honor and splendor of the Melakim or angels and those who refer to the most high as beast and, and all kind of you know uh, into startling visions and horrible shapes and they will waste away even more huh All right, let's get uh, verse eight. For they shall see that world which is now invisible to them. And they will see a time which is now hidden to them. And time will no longer make them older. For they will live in the heights of that world and they will be like the Melakim and be equal to the stars or meteor. Mr. Mythos. And they will be changed into any. Let's get this for Mr. Mythos. Any shape which they wish. All right. Yeah, get all that. From beauty to loveliness and from light to the to the uh, splendor of honor 
All right, this is why we do this, Mr. Mythos. All right, but you can see, all right, that a Mela King, you see that? For they will live in the heights of that world and they will be like the Mela King, Mr. Mythos, and be equal to the stars like the Mela King. For what? The Mela King can change shape which they wish, all right? And we're just talking can also be a person. And so what is this dragon? All right. Truly, what is the nature? All right. All right. So here. Uh, Daweed says, for thou would light my prester, all right? The most high my power will enlighten my darkness, for by thee I have run through a troop. A whole troop of niggas. All right, whatever a troop was back then. A brigade or something. <laughs> And by my power, I have leaped over a wall. All right. It is a wall that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. All right. You understand that? Perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet. All right. And so... When David is risen up in the end times, perhaps what form will he be coming in? All right. Because Second Ezra, you know, he flew upon a mountain. Uh, what it said, what it said. Uh, yeah. Flew upon a mountain. All right. And so, what is this flying, all right? We know angels can fly, all right, Mr. Mythos. We do know that. Heinz feet, huh? Heinz feet. All right. Enough of that. All right. Let's see if I can make this a little quick. All right, first of all, You're talking about a Canaanite deity, all right? Yahweh. That is not his name. See that? And Hoaz said unto Moshe, I am that I am. Let's highlight one. Now, why would the Most High give Moshe two I am's? All right. Drop Nation, I already know. All right. Because this is a union. This is a signature, Adam and Eve. All right. And he said, Thus shalt thou say to unto the children of Israel, I am. Have sent me unto you. Okay, so we know that this was a description, right? But then the Most High makes itself clear and says, And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, of Israel, I am. All right. All right, Mr. Mythos. Let's get it in strongs. I'm still looking for your Apaim, homie. I don't see it. Okay, so keep in mind those two I am's, all right? He took uh, Moshe straight out the word. I, well, I am that I am. 
And so we're just talking your father and your mother above Israel. All right. And notice I said Israel, uh, Mr. Mythos. I, be, you, I had to direct that towards them. All right. Because that had nothing to do with you. All right. Father, mother. But I think it's only fitting that you know also that they can be all of these. All right. All right, this is what we have before the Paleo Hebrew was hijacked, all right? But you need to know that they can, what my head is, they can be Ra'am, all right? Violent also. It's the mythos, all right? I mean, they can frick, roar. Thunder, they can trouble the earth. <laughs> all right. But last but not least, ta'am, ta'am, all right, are to be complete. And we're just talking a signature. That is the nine. That is Adam and Eve, all right. Twin. All right, a bit of it coupled. All right. All right, Mr. Mythos. Uh, let's go here with it. All right, so let's, let's get you acquainted with our power. All right. Exodus chapter 33, verse 12, 23. And Moshe said unto, I mean, and Moshe said unto the Most High, Shalaki, see, uh, thou see, uh, saith, sayest, all right, unto me, bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me, all right? And so Most High is asking for some reinforcement here, all right? Uh, yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, shew me now thy way, uh, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. So Moshe is asking for a little proof, all right? Let me show me a little something, something all right? All right, here is where it get interesting. All right, and we're come, we're going to kind of divert away from uh, uh, Mr. Mithros, and he said, "My presence." All right, keep that in mind. My presence. All right, I shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, "If thy presence again go not with me." Carry us not up hence. All right. So uh, Moshe is asking for some reinsurance. All right. He just reassured that. All right. Now you said, now we understand you can't go. All right. Why? All right, so we understand that the Most High cannot go, why? All right, and this Mr. Mythos is Torah 101, a book of remembrance, or Tanakh. I like the book of remembrance. Only could the Most High said it in Malachi, all right? I think it was Malachi 3, all right, but why can't? Why couldn't the Most High go uh, with Moshe and the children? All right. Well, it is. Uh, thus says the Most High. The heaven 
is my throne, Shamaim, and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things have mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Most High. So you really can't build the Most High a house, all right? Um, mythos, uh, but uh, to this man, all right? Well, I tell you what, let's, uh, all right, let's get back to Exodus 33, all right, 16. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy, in thy sight? Uh, is it not in that thou goest with us? Uh, so shall we be separate, separated, Shalaki, I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face uh, of the earth. All right, so Moshe saying, all right, if you go with us, then everybody else going to know, all right, that you rocking with us, all right. And that was when the Most High was going to begin to put uh, his dread, all right. Uh, uh, upon the nations by us, all right? He was going to use us to do it. All right, so Moshe says, well, and the Most High said unto Moshe, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory, all right? <clears throat> From the get-go, Mo uh, Moshe is looking to get a little bit of that magnificent, all right, glory, all right? And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Most High before thee. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and show mercy to whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face. All right, <clears throat> for there shall no man see me and live. All right, another reason why the Most High couldn't go uh, with them, he sent his presence. All right, and the Most High said, Behold, uh, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. All right, and it shall come to pass. While my glory passes by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock and will cover thee with my hand. Okay, so we know the Most High has a hand, all right? And so, even in Ezekiel, all right, when Ezekiel saw the throne, all right, he saw the figure of a man, all right? <clears throat> All right, person. All right, con, con. All right, I right, so I'm gonna let drop. Uh, get at a man. Look here, man. Drop, man. Show Mr. Mythos, Mythos, Mythros. Uh, that we ain't nothing to play with. Uh, but before you do, man, let's. Uh, Mr. Mythros, check this out. Uh, do the run of me. Chapter 29, verse 29, all right? It says, the secret things, all right, belong to the most high, our power, all right? But those things which are revealed, and we're talking about truth, uh, belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of our law. Get them dry. Creator of the green earth, mama earth, oh. and creator of the blue sky. With my right hand, I beat it out. Rakwa, I beat out. I met out the firmament, right? Awa. So, Monaga, we have a framer and a shaper. And we don't have a serpent because we know that there's a difference between the serpent and the dragon. You talking snake? Or are you talking drag 
see in alchemy, right? When you study energy, frequency, vibration. As we've gotten, man, as my, as my wave surfers know, we talk the alchemical dragon, an alchemical serpent. The serpent is one thing, right? They say he represents the impersonal nature of the unconscious. Unconscious. As it bursts into consciousness. Reminds me of artificial intelligence, you know. But let go. That's the serpent. And then you got the what? The owl chemical dragon. Yeah. So the serpent can't be the dragon if there's a serpent and a dragon in alchemy. So when they keep saying serpent, you don't know if they're talking a snake or a dragon or neither of the above. Maybe they're just talking about the impersonal nature of the unconscious. Maybe they're just talking about uh, something that brings everything to life, but also kills everything. Yeah, that's the serpent, my knife. <laughs> that's the serpent, right? But what's the what's the dragon? Right? What about the dracon? Our chemical on. dragon represents the philosophical quicksilver. That, that just means they have no idea. And they're going to tell you right here. And he said that. Unlike ordinary Mercury. Again, which means they have no idea because everything they're based the cosmos off is ordinary Mercury. But you're talking about something beyond what, what Thoth can see, what Mercury can see. You're talking about something they're calling the mysterious substance of unknown origin. So the Naga is unknown. The dragon is unknown. All they know is that life, man, it gives us life, right? The living spirit can be extracted from this dragon. Life, right? So let's get back to our framer and shaper. We're just talking life. What they call serpent, we're not talking about killing everything. We're not talking about just bursting into consciousness. We're talking about the creator energy, which is what? Life. They say the spirit, right? In alchemy, it is the vessel in which the spirit is contained. Ah, con, con, secret con, things, contained. secret things. Con, 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 con. <laughs> All right, so your spirit, your Ruach is the dragon. That's why they say, Raise your kundalini. Facts. Raise your dragon. Raise your ruach. Raise your spirit. You Not are the, the last dragon. dragon. You Angel possess the, the power of Talking mother, the glow. green earth. Creator of the blue sky. Also known as. Also known as the framer. And the shaper. Framer, shaper. So they just say God, right? In Christianity, they just say God. Or in Islam, they just say Allah. You think about, you know, one man, you know, by himself doing things by himself, right? <laughs> but yet you have a house and you try to, you know, your house is a manifestation of the house that's above you, right? But what house is above you with, with just one lonely man by himself walking to and fro? Facts. Your mama is always there. Facts. Your mama is always there, man. When you talk framer and shaper, what they call, oh, let's get it from here. Let's get it. Quiche language, Zako, Tako, and Bito, frame or shape, right? First, the one who makes something by putting things together. So, we're going to finish putting things together with this Hebrew Aleph Bet, this Picto Paleo, right? Like a stone or adobe, a meal from various ingredients. That's what we call wisdom today, right? You got the wisdom to put the meal together, to figure it out, to fortify the kingdom. Solomon is praying for the ability to fortify the kingdom, to put the meal 
to put the ingredients together to form a meal. Fact. All right. So you got your strong power going into the house, gathering, right? I left, but gone. Mm -hmm. I left, but gone. Dog, you went through a door together as a tribe. Then ah, you gotta, you gotta look, right? Somebody gave you a look, right? You got a breath. You got a revelation. Framer. Why? All right, and the. Uh... The pronunciation, all right, if he was to pan uh, to the right, all right, that pronunciation is a ha, all right? And so this hey is a ha. See that breath, but it's intake, all right? Because it is the feminine, all right? The inner, the ruach. Let's go. Is the masculine, like they say, secure a hook or a tent peg. What do you do with a tent peg? You have to pound it into the soil, into the earth. We're talking about the earth. We're talking about, you know, mother of the uh, of the green earth, right? So your framer, One who makes something by putting things together, right? Wisdom from various ingredients. Your shaper refers to one who makes something by modeling, modeling. Pottery from clay, right? I formed you. I formed you, right? I shaped you. You're shaped in the vibe, the vibe, the vibration shapes, right? Or a sculpture from carved stone, thus giving shape to an otherwise amorphous substance. The framer and shaper are the most frequently mentioned gods involved in the creation of the world ah. and its inhabitants. Man, I'm reading out of the Papuva, the Maya Kishé root, the root document, my nugget. All right. The root. And so if you want to find the source of Genesis, Popovu. Let's go. The framer and the shape are the most frequently mentioned power involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. Their names imply the creation involved giving frame and shape to matter that already, already existed. Exists. That's right. Oh, wow. God, creator, is the key to a host of linguistic forms, while El, a common Shemitic word for God, is well remembered in the Bible. Awa, the ancient name for the creator, is not. The reason is simple. When the Israelites were given Yahweh, right? Mm. So now they're going to Yahweh. But were they ever given Yahweh? He just said, he just said, <laughs> it is easily identified form of Hebrew verb. It is the most ancient name. So what name were they given? Yahweh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got to dodge the hijack. Because they want to give you a new name. Now, who who, who needs a new name, my dog? Moses don't get a... No one else has a new name. Why would they have to call Hawa a new name? They learn to forget the old Hawa. Huh? So is that a good thing? That they get a new name and forget the old Hawa? Come. All right. We're in the Targum. Genesis, all right? Uh, on Kilas. Read. And the Lord said, Let the lakes of the waters swarm forth the reptile, uh? the living animal and the fowl which flieth, whose nest is upon the earth, and let the way of the bird be upon the air of the expanse of the heavens. Go ahead. And the Lord created the great tannins. The great tannins, huh? And so... Mr. Mythos, um, it don't matter how you slice it or dice it, all right? See that? We're just talking angel, huh? No matter how you slice it or dice it, huh? Mm-hmm. 
No matter how you slice it or dice it. That's what you're going to get. All right. No matter how you slice it. Even Chalkaidri. All right. Coming out of the Book of Enoch. See that? All right. All right, let's find out about this angel of the presence. All right. Uh, perhaps, Mr. Mithros, um, you had the most highest personal dracon. <laughs> all right. I'm mistaken. All right. Since we know that. The dragon is the vessel in which the soul is contained. All right, Exodus 23, 20 through 24. Behold, I send an angel, Dracon, angel, Dracon, uh, before thee, uh, to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name... Is in him, all right. Uh, but thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, and then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Uh, for my dracon shall go before thee, all right, because the most high I sit, uh, heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool, Mr. Mythos. All right. And bring thee unto the Amorites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites. Oh, that was Hittites, my bad. Hivites, Jebusites. And I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down, down to their gods, all right, nor serve them, or nor do after their works. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them. All right. And quite break down their images. All right. That's right. Most high kill nations for us. All right. All right, Mr. Mythos. I uh, meet the angel of presence. All right. All right, there were no J's. All right, this is the closest thing we have, all right? And so everybody was digging on Mikael. No, here's the real deal. I am Yehuel. I am also called, okay. Angel of Presence. Oh, he holds the Leviathan in check, all right? And so, Mr. Mythos, at one point, uh, did you not uh, uh, throw in your conjecture? All right. And it lead to the fact that uh, our power could be Leviathan himself. All right. See, I didn't go, I didn't go through the whole thing. All right. I was very disrespectful. All right, Apocalypse of Abraham. Let's go get it. All right, y'all, here we go. We're in the apocalypse of Abraham. All right, read. And it came to pass when I heard the voice of him who spoke such words to me. Uh -huh. And I looked here and there and found no breath in me. And my spirit was frightened. Mm -hmm. And my soul seemed as departed from me. For I fell down as a stone. 
as a dead man upon the earth, earth read on. and had no more strength to stand. All right, read. And while I was thus lying with my faith towards the earth, uh -huh. I heard the voice of the Holy One Holy speaking. One. Come on. Go, Jawel, and by... All right, read. By means of my ineffable name, raise up yonder man and strengthen him, so that he recovers from his trembling. Read. And the angel whom he had sent came to me in the likeness of a man. All right. All right. We got that in Second Baruch 51, right? But we're still talking dragon person. All right, read on. And grasped me by my right hand uh -huh. and set me up upon my feet and right, said read. to me, Come on. Stand up, Abraham. Stand up. Friend of God who uh -huh. loves you. Let not the trembling of man seize you. For lo, I have been sent to you to strengthen you and to bless you in the name of God. Oh, oh, wow. All right, read on. you, the creator of the celestial and the terrestrial. All right, read. Be fearless and hasten to him. Beware of him. And obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. All right, read on. I am called Jawel by him who moves those who exist with me on the seventh expanse over the heavens. Ye who will? All right. A power in virtue of the ineffable name that is dwelling in me. All right, read on. I am the one who has been given to restrain, according to his commandment, the threatening attacks of the living ones of the cherubim against one another. All right, read. And to teach those who carry him the song of the seventh hour of the night of man. Come on. I am ordered to restrain the Leviathan. The Leviathan, huh? The Dracon who holds the Leviathan in check. All right, and so perhaps uh, Mr. Mythos, uh, you must have mistaken the Most High's personal Dracon, Angel, Dracon, all right. All right, that's Who's depicted? In Psalms 18. All right. Because here in 10, it says the most high did what? He rode upon a cherub and did fly. All right, but <clears throat> keep in mind, Mr. Mythos, the Most High said he will render vengeance to his enemies and he will repay those who take cheap shots. All right, uh, Mr. Myth Mythos. Now, let us formally introduce you to our mother and father above. 